Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Let's Learn Circuits. So today I'm going to talk about how to expand your IOs. So we've made this small little board, um, just nine LEDs with nine read switches and a read switch is like a sw normal switch where you take the magnet and if you take a magnet close to it, it will close and when you take it away, the circuit will open. So what we did is we took these nine LEDs and nine read switches and made 64 of them. So as you know, Arduino or ESP32, you cannot connect 64 buttons or switches to the Arduino. There's not enough pins. So what you need to use is an IO expander. So we made use of a shift register. And in this video, I'm going to show you what we used, how we used it, and how you can implement it in your PCB design. So let's get started. So as you can see here, we've got a project in Altium and we have about 64 red switches. Um, that needs to go towards your ESP or Arduino. So I'm not going to go too much in detail about this project. So I like to break out my projects into components, explain each one, and then we get to the final product. So as you can see, a red switch we used as a normal switch with a pull down resistor just to make sure it's grounded. You can make this probably 10K and then a pull up to five. So when I push the button, we'll have five volts on the input. Now this goes into what we call a shift register. So what shift register we used is the SN47HC165D. So what this actually does is you can see all my inputs going in there and then daisy chaining to one another. So in easy to understand term, as I've got eight re switches here, I tell it, okay, cool, take this information, send it to the next one. Then I add my following next ones, following eight, clock it, send it through to the next one, and I keep doing this in series. So it's advised that with this SN740, 740, 40, 74, uh, it's only a four in series. So you can see I've got four here, and then I've got a new line with my QH output to the serial, which is the input. And you can see these are all the read switches from, yeah, so all 64 goes to my shift register so as you can see we've got about 64 read switches here which looks like a normal switch so when i push it or when a magnet comes close to this it closes and then i'll get five volts on my signal here we always have a pull down resistor to ground to make sure that this output is not floating we always want to have a state we can control so we either have high or low so if this was missing you'll never know okay is it five volts is it 1.1 volts no it's ground this can maybe be 10k this is quite a strong pull down um, it's not too important it will still work um, so yes yeah, so these are my 64 read switches <laughs> uh, i was actually going to keep this project a surprise so this is the only place you'll see what this project is about we're actually busy making a small chessboard uh, if you lift a piece up it will tell you how to move and um, how each piece can be used so it's more of a learning opportunity. This is the only place you guys will hear about it. I've not mentioned on Instagram or any other place. So, but, I, but it's a project we're working towards. And of course, we'll show you guys. Uh, a subscriber actually helped us with this. So it wasn't just me, but I'll say more about that in the future. So these are the magic where the magic happens. So we use a shift register called a SN74HC165D. So basically what it does is it takes the input from our re-switches that we saw on the other sheet and it's got eight inputs and then it when i clock it it will push this information here out to the next one and then it will add the next to the same line so at the end here we'll have all the states of these buttons on one line on like in a register so you can read it in the esp32 or the arduino i will explain the programming of this as well uh, but this is just about the schematic with this shift register, it's advised to only have four in series. That's why we've got another four at the bottom that's independent of two. So what happens is I've got my eight re-switches. I'll explain this clock, clock enable and shift uh, later. But when the clock goes low, it pushes out, adds this, pushes it out, adds this, pushes it out, add this, push out. And then this goes to my microcontroller. So this will go to our expander one or two, and then you'll write the code to break this down in something you can understand and use. So let's talk about the three important signals you can see here. So we've got clock, clock inhibit, strange name, clock inhibit, and shift and load. 
So you have to change the states of these signals to make sure that the information gets from here out to here. So you can see these are eight lines and this is one line. So this will be a, like an information uh, line where all this information will be on the signal line. So this won't be just the one low, it will pulse like a PWM signal that it will be able to interpret on the side. So how we push information from this side to that side is we keep cycling the clock. So the clock goes low to high, so we change the states. And then we have to keep, so how we push our information from here to there is by changing these three, what should we call them? These three signals. So as always guys, I recommend you guys look at the data sheet. So when we look at the data sheet, we can see what happens. So when we want to load our information, we make the shift and load low. That means a zero or ground. And then you can see if we want to shift it, we can actually shift it in two separate ways. Changing the clock from low to high while keeping the clock inhibit low and the shift load high. Or the other way, we can keep the clock low and the clock enable and this will shift as well. So you first load it, so you load your three buttons. What I mean load is we load this into it and then we shift it out. So this becomes low, it loads it into the chip, we make that high and then we toggle one of these while keeping it low, while keeping one of them low and we'll keep shifting it. So I did make revision just in case we want to clock it at the same time, which I think we might want to do. Um, so I added the zero and resisted just to short it. So this can save time by maybe not having to do it twice on the ESP32. So that and that will short. So when I clock it, all of this will clock. Uh, it's just something I have to play around with. Always designed for uh, things that you might suspect to go wrong. And then at the end is this information QH. We'll go to my microcontroller and my program will interpret the register that this sends out. So all the states of these LED of these read switches will be in a single line of information that we have to um, find out how to read on the ESP32. That will explain in programming in the next video. Just something interesting guys. Um, so you guys see these lines above our letters like QH. So QH uh, is just the output of this chip. So the, the line above actually negates it. So let's say I've got a one output here, ne the negative of QH will be a zero. So in electronics, when you see a line on top, it normally means neg negation, <laughs> a negative. It's like the squiggly in front is also just indication of a negative or inverse, should I say. So the inverse of zero will be one, inverse of one will be zero. I don't know if it's a right wording, but that is what it means, what it happens. So in short, all the 64 read switches gets to the shift register and by using shift registers I decrease the pins that my ESP32 needs to read all 64 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 pins. So like I said, you are not going to connect all 64 directly to ESP32. It's just not possible actually. Um, so you have to use make, make use of I expanders, shift registers, things like that. So read switches in, gets clocked, 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 and then they add them together to make one signal, and that signal comes to my ESP32, where my program will interpret which read switch has been activated by a magnet. Quite easy, quite fun. And as you guys see, I always make use of sheets. <laughs> so I've actually made videos about Let's Playing Circus about all this, and I just reuse it in my projects, my LEDs and now I added some read switches and an eye expander. But this is all stuff we've done before. That's why it's always nice to take old projects, or not old projects, old she sheets, <laughs> old schematics that you've used before that you know that works and just reuse them. Don't You don't need to reinvent the wheel. So that's it guys, um, I hope it was helpful. So this is just a sneak peek on actually chessboard. Um, I've not spoken about it anywhere on social media or anything. Uh, so it's just a fun way to teach people how to play chess. So if you lift a piece, the piece will have a magnet at the bottom. So when the magnet gets lifted, the LEDs will display where this uh, piece can move, like a knight or bishop. I'm very fond of chess. I don't speak about it a lot, but I really love it. Um, so it's just a way that I can teach people how to play chess. I did not do this project alone, but more about that in the future videos. Um, but yeah, I'm quite excited. This project I'm quite excited about. Um, but I hope the circuit 
was helpful and that you guys can use in your project. So when you have a lot of inputs from buttons, switches, that type of things, think of a way to minimize it going to your ESP, going to your Arduino, going to your STM32. Um, you don't want to use too many IO pins if you don't have to. So this is a great way to decrease that IOs onto your um, microcontroller. So this is for input, but you do also get shift registers and things for output. So there's two different ways. Um, so yeah, so this small board is going to become much bigger. This is also the last video that you guys will see my hair like this. I'm cutting my hair on Tuesday. The hairdressers are being open again. So I'll look all neat and span. Guys, have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic week. We are in the world. Um, tomorrow I'm having a... Uh, tomorrow, it depends when you watch it. The 1st of March, I'm having a five-hour stream for my birthday. Please feel free to watch and ask questions. So it's a community stream where I'm going to help people about their PC design. So the 1st of March, 2021. So if you watch it after that, you missed it. Okay, bye.